and welcome to the Humble Choice Monthly Bundle, February 2021. Another month, another bundle. For those of you who may not know, Humble Choice Bundle is every month they have a bundle of 12 games that you can purchase, or typically it's $12 a month, or you can have a yearly subscription for a little bit less price per month. So every month when the 12 games are released, I look through each and every one of them and decide if I want to spend my $12 or if I want to pause for a month and save my $12 for a different month. So it looks like the headliners, these three games right here. Let's uh, let's go into it and see which 12 games are listed as included here for February 2021. The first headliner game is Out Outward plus the Zoroborians and Outward soundtrack. Valkyrie Chronicles 4 Complete Edition is the next headliner. Endless Space 2 Digital Deluxe Edition is the last headliner. Then we have Moving Out Drawing 4 The Nightmare Prince The Wild 8 Drain Station Renovation Valfaris Werewolf the Apocalypse, Heart of the Forest, Lovecraft's Untold Stories, Iris and the Giant, and lastly, Boomerang Fu. So usually it's it's split. It always seems to follow the same formula. A couple headliners, fairly big games, a couple medium-sized games that maybe I've heard of. And then a, quite a few just random games that I know nothing about. But let's look at these games one by one. I usually rate it, you know, thumbs up, thumbs down. Is it a positive towards me buying? Is it a negative or is it a neutral? So without further ado, let's jump right into Outward. It says, no remarkable journey is achieved without great effort. Outward is an open world RPG where the cold of the night or an infected wound can be as dangerous as a predator lurking in the dark. Explore the vast world of Aurai. Embark on memorable adventures alone or with your friend. You are not a god nor a chosen one. The path before you is fraught with perils. Immersive RPG experience, survival gameplay, deeply rewarding challenge. Threatening creatures, hazardous environmental conditions, diseases. Make sure you get enough sleep, stay hydrated. You know, this game is actually on my wish list. But to be fair, I have 371 games on my wish list. I basically wish list any game that looks slightly interesting. Um, for, for no real reason. So, even within my wish list, there is a variety of games that I really, really want. And a game that I thought, hey, that looks cool. This has a 75% rating, which is, uh, you know, solidly good. Not, not special, but good. I think I actually had a friend of mine uh, who wanted to play this with me, and I just didn't want to pay full price at the time. It's $40 originally, but a historical low of $11, $11 or so. A fanatical. Do all this does include this Sorobriance, which is a, typically a $15 DLC that only has a 
has like 66% reviews, which isn't great. Uh, okay. But, and so just off the bat, RPG, open, open world, as tags. Hey, it sounds great to me. Survival. I, I really start to lose interest in survival games. Unfortunately, I, it's just not usually my cup of tea. When you have to do things like stay hydrated, get sleep, infectious diseases, it's like, uh, it's just kind of feels tedious to me in games at times. Like I just want to explore or something. I don't, why do I need water? Ugh, this is too much like real life that I'm specifically avoiding. <laughs> Sometimes, like, survival, at least it's not crafting RPG, which I'm not a huge fan of, because, I don't know, in my games, I like to have an objective to follow, and not just... No. Just some gameplay. I, I don't... Oh, I was talking about freebies. No. Just a normal person. Okay, well, so it's on my wish list, which is a, a plus. Getting a game on my wish list. It's great. Uh, screenshots look okay. Graphic wise, what's next? Co op. I don't play too many co op games. If I'm playing a game with a friend, it's usually like a just online multiplayer game. The graphics look okay. They don't look that great, honestly. Different skills. I'm just not huge on survival type games. Go up. So oh, RPG open world sounds great. Survival go up. Not as Some auto saving. Survive in the wilds. The refuse fun game, different class builds and storylines. But the enemies can be incredibly hard to defeat. I want to see like if you die in a game, do you have to start over? Difficulty, lack of creatures. Interesting, interesting. Some people really like it. Uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm torn on this game. For one that's on my wish list, you think I would be more committed. But I'm not. I, I'm, I'm going to give this one just like a meh, a neutral rating. It doesn't hurt or help it. It's a great for a, a headliner, because if it's not, not immediately pulling me in, <laughs> and the next is Valkyrie Chronicles 4 Complete Edition. You know, I've seen this before, this game. Because it has a super unique art style, like anime, like on some paper. But it has like dinks and stuff, which you don't usually see. It says, its description is, A continent engulfed in the bitter flames of war. Commander Cloud, Wallace, Cloud, Wallace and his childhood friends set out to fight in a desperate war, but bone-chilling blizzards, waves of imperial soldiers, and the godlike powers of the Valkyrie stand between them and victory. Got a 90% positive review, that's pretty good. I've always, I've seen this game, always curious how it actually plays. So it looks like almost like a turn-based RPG, or if it is, like with tanks flying. I heard it has a really cool story. It's all DLC too. It takes place. Oh yeah, so I haven't played the original. Fact. 
Valkyrie Chronicles, I guess one through three in this case, focuses on Squatty. I heard there's all sort of like different perspectives of the same war that's going on. Coming of age story time. When was this released? This was released in 2018, so fairly new. like looking up how long it takes to beat certain games and knowing that it's game length it doesn't matter like if it's a short game but good so I would absolutely prefer that to a long game that's not very good okay so it takes up 36 48 hours I usually do main plus extra I definitely do extra stuff so 50 hours it's not too bad, I just beat Cyberpunk, which took up a lot more than that. It's all DLC as well. So, a long story, that's that's pretty good. Um, I mean, the story sounds similar to XCOM. Interesting. More in-depth storytelling and characters. Uh, Cutscenes told the visual novel style and tactical turn-based real-time combat missions. Stories told through cutscenes. It's fine by me. Or voiced, of course. Like fifty percent of the game is cutscenes. I'm fine with, with watching it. Uh, while watching cutscenes, it's turn-based, kind of slightly real time. Uh, okay. Graphics are ga great. Shells sell shaded. battle engine. Okay, some people are going very, very in-depth. I mean, I think that's pretty cool. I'm all in for cool stories. Um, I don't know if I'm missing out from playing the other games. Again, it's a game that's on my wish list. So, I think overall this game is a plus. Okay. Endless Space 2 is the last headliner. Endless Space 2 is a strategic space opera featuring compelling just one more turn gameplay set in the mysterious Endless Universe. As the leader of your civilization, will you impose your vision and build the greatest stellar empire? 83% reviews, not bad, not bad. And so I guess it's like Civilization being like a 4X type game. I don't play too many 4X type games, mostly just Civilization. Um, now this game actually is on Xbox Game Pass PC, which is. I got this plugin called Augmented Steam that gives you little notes like this, like historical low. And uh, like other information like if, if you might have owned this somewhere else. So, that's pretty neat. Do I, do I have in this space I owned? Wait, I thought I owned in this space. Is there a first one? In this, in this space, I do, I own the first one. I have not actually played it. 2012, so I guess this is like an updated version. In this dungeon, it's just legends. It's a lot of these endless games. Uh, what's the gameplay like? First look. I want to see the first look trailer. Uh, that's fine. The different factions, I suppose, and yep, you, you battle it out for domination. It looks pretty cool. Sometimes, though, I don't play a lot of. 4X type games. Um, the video is shush. Uh, okay, the, the sound of, was playing in the background, even though I had moved away. I don't play a lot of 4X's huge strategy games sometimes because it takes 
so long to really get into them and understand all the mechanics before it gets, you know, starts getting fun. That's why I usually haven't strayed from the Civilization series, because that's one that I learned as a kid and kind of transfers throughout. I like the idea of building a civilization. Oh, that's kind of cool, different political parties. Again, on my wish list. But I do own Xbox Game Pass, so I can maybe just play it for free there. It looks... And I have so many games, though. That's what I have to think about. I have so many games on Steam. That it really has to be compelling. Or else it's just going to be a game that I add to my li library and never end up playing. So I don't want to add too many meh games. Or games that I don't know if I would actually ever play. But all in all, I think this is definitely a plus. Pretty good reviews. It looks cool. Gameplay is when the game is in the advanced stage. Then it's getting increasingly difficult to get in the next turn. Turn switching freeze. Conference is pretty. It's very pretty. Combat's lacking. Never finished. That's strange. Armies are on night and present the same regardless of faction, making the gameplay between each very mid marginal. I think it's I, I think overall this is still a plus. This is a plus to my bundle experience. I like it. Looks neat. Alright, moving out. Moving out is a re ridiculous physics-based moving simulator that brings new meaning to couch co-op. Are you ready for an exciting career in furniture? As a newly certified furniture arrangement and relocation technician, you'll take on moving jobs all across the busy town of Packmore. It has 83% reviews. SMG Studios. This looks like. I was gonna say this looks very similar to like Overcooked. Looks like it's. Wait, who makes Overcooked? Oh, same publisher. Interesting. Overcooked's made by uh, Team Seventeen. Okay. It seems to sh share the exact same premise. In that, well, okay, obviously not the same premise, uh, whereas Overcooked was like doing something fairly normal, like cooking, but in just like crazy environments. This seems like doing something fairly normal, like moving, but in crazy environments, like on the wing of an airplane, <laughs> on a, a piano. Even the character select screen is kind of reminiscent of that. looks so much like overcooked just moving instead of cooking <laughs> um but like with overcooked oh this is also on game pass right now but like with overcooked i don't play a lot of local co-op games they're just not easy to play right now you know because of that thing that's going on that i don't want to mention so you can't necessarily have a lot of people over at your house and, and playing all the time so, I mean, at most I can have one other person playing a game with me in in the same room, right? But uh, it seems like four players is what it's best for. I don't even know if I have four controllers. So, I just, I don't play a lot of co-op games. It seems like fun, a beat, silly. Yeah, let's look at this little, so everyone's kind of moving it around. They're just like throwing boxes over a lake. I mean, it looks funny. Oh, okay, unique cast of characters. Place a cup of rum and noodles in a wheelchair and throw a bed on a second floor window, run from ghosts. So, oh, there's no online co-op though. Uh, yeah. 
remote play is borderline unplayable. <sighs> yeah, I think I think it looks like a fun game, but I just I'm not gonna get four people together to play it. So unfortunately, I mean, uh, I want to mark this as a neutral, but I think a neutral would still be like I want it. But I may not play it, or like maybe I'll play it one day. Or this one, I I, I like it. I think I want to play it, but I don't think realistically I actually will. It's because of local co-op only and only and getting people together. So I'm gonna have to give this a thumbs down, unfortunately. Drine Four: The Nightmare Prince. The best-selling Drine series returns to the magic of two. Join three iconic heroes as they set off on a quest through fantastical fairy tale landscapes to save the world from the Nightmare Prince's shadows. Okay, as 90%, that's pretty good. I think I have some of the other Trine games. I have. No, I have Trine 2. Do I have the first Trine? one. I guess I own I own two and three. I heard three was bad. Sixty five percent. No two was ninety five percent. So I own two and three. Not one and not four. <laughs> Came out twenty nineteen. That's really really recent. Um I usually don't play a lot of puzzle platformer type games. I mean it looks pretty interesting. I I have no idea if you need to play the first couple of trines, if that would help at all. It's just like a co-op game again. This is probably one of the games. Play with up to four players online or a local co-op. I don't think I have four friends that own this game. And Story-based games like this are not ones I think that you would usually want to play with randos. You know, you'd really want to play that with actual people. The art does look amazing, though. I'll give it that. Oh, wow, that looks so good, especially full screen. Oh, wow. That looks beautiful. Looks like there's four different heroes that you've had and have different abilities, and... Each person plays a different hero. Can you play this by yourself? I, w I, bet it, I bet it wouldn't be a lot of fun playing solo. <laughs> Brings it back to the roots. Yeah, try and save us back. Went back to 2.5D. This one's great. Great to play with two buddies. I mean, it looks really good, but uh, just again, I, I, I'm not gonna have multiple friends that that want to come and play Trine Four out of all games. You know, I've not played one through three, despite owning bizarrely just two and three. I don't know, but uh, I'm. I'm this can be played by myself. It'd be weird just that. I guess you just have like AI companions, or would you just play as one single companion? I, I would imagine having friends really makes this is what makes a game like this fun. And uh, I I have friends. Okay, okay. Just I don't know. They don't play games like this. <laughs> so I'm gonna give this one a neutral game that I. I would maybe want to play if, if I got it, but isn't going to be the reason why I actually purchased the bundle. Next is The Wild 8. The Wild 8 is an intense survival action adventure set in the frozen wilderness of Alaska. Team up with friends in online co-op or go solo. Explore the mysterious land, craft weapons, and fight to live. 
the setting kind of reminds me of Quentin Tarantino's movie, The Hateful Eight. It's like a cabin in a snowy wooded area. Fairly new. 72% all reviews, but 51% recent reviews. It's not great. And I, I did just talk about survival, open world survival craft. Oh, and multiplayer. Man, I spent this whole time so far just talking about how uh, open world survival and crafting games are not my favorite, and how I wouldn't really play multiplayer very much. Uh, <laughs> the mysterious plane crash was only the beginning. Eight survivors are stranded in the middle of an unforgiving frozen wilderness of Alaska. Don't let it consume you. Find out the truth. Survive and live to tell the tale of the wild eight. Always be on the move is your only chance to survive. Okay. This is an abandoned game, huh? So many bugs. There has not been an update to it in over a year. Issues are still there. Some funds and some WTF moments. Huh. Looks like it's never completed. Interesting. It's meant to be played co op or multiplayer, obviously. Too many things you must do just to survive in the harsh environment. Busy dodging wolves and bears get attacked by a ghost. Huh. It feels unfinished, riddled with bugs overall leaves much to be desired. Good amount of potential with some decent survival gameplay with friends. Some resources are too scarce for a large number of players. So a low 2 to 4 seems best. The second half of the game is rushed, nonsensical, and seems to be unfinished. Buggy and abandoned. Well, that doesn't look very great. Combined with, I don't want to play very many survival games. I don't like crafting. Uh, yeah, this one is uh, looking to be a, a just a big negative, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, so, sorry, the Wild Eight, I kind of like the premise of a plane crash and investigate, you know, things going weird, some supernatural, but it seems like the game is just not great. Or a res like an abandoned research facility next to a plane crash in the middle of Alaska. Sounds like a cool premise, but, uh, no. Next is... Train station renovation. Welcome to an old ruined train station. A place that will give you a lot of fun. In train station renovation, you will play as a renovation company specialized in restoring old and damaged railway stations. Has 83% overall and 63% recent reviews. Huh. I've heard this is sort of in the same vein as, like, House Flipper. A calming, more like simulation-based game. So I guess you can... Uh, this is by the same uh, live motion games. Yeah, they make it. Oh yeah, some cars and train bundles, okay. Chernobyl Liquidator Simulator. What the heck? Will not find mutants. You will work hard to contain the radiation. Conspire with the government. That actually sounds pretty cool. Okay, this is a whole different game. Got to get to my wish list. See, that's what I do. Added it. Um. No. Oh. I just was playing some music. Okay, uh, renovation company, restoring railway stations, 15 maps 
manifestations, which gradually teach you new mechanics and help you manage different working environments. Okay, okay. Looks a lot like a house cleaner. You sort of scan, you see what's not great. You clean up the different graffiti. Decorate train stations and trains. Development tree. Economy is very important. You benefit by segregating waste or completing additional tasks. Build your own stations with decorations. Uh, okay, okay. Game lags like crazy after putting down a few bits of furniture. Not good. Sounds funny. It reminds me of games like House Flipper. Basic ideas, remarkably similar. It would be fun if it were not a slideshow after placing a few objects. Totally unplayable for me. Wow, a bunch of very, very negative reviews. Frame rate jumps. Wow, okay. If your favorite part of House Flipper and Part Finders was cleaning up stuff and making a big level nice and tidy, this game is for you. Interesting. That's if you like Zen style task emulators like House Flipper or Viscera Cleanup Detail, this game is right up your alley. Uh, replay value is kind of iffy. You know, when I first saw this game in Nambo Bundle, I thought, like, yeah, this is going to be a positive, be pretty good for ASMR too, right? I mean, this guy doesn't seem to have performance issues. He's placing some items down. But even like in like House Flipper, I uh, I'm, I'm better when it's uh, like the tasks given to you tell you to do a certain thing than decorating a whole house on my own. <laughs> um, I thought this was going to be a for sure thumbs up. Whoa, nuclear waste. That's fun. Um, but the guy probably wasn't having many performance issues but so many comments, I just can't ignore all the comments like that. Maybe, maybe it would be sin for a little bit, but I wonder how, re how replayable it is. If I would get bored after a while. I don't know. I'll give this one a very, very mild thumbs up. Just a hair above neutral. <laughs> Next is Valfaris. Interesting. Set in a far corner of space, Valfaris is a heavy metal infused 2D action platformer. In the next game from the team behind Unity Awards finalist slain back from hell, brutal combat, deadly enemies, stunning pixel art, savage soundtrack, get ready to rip the galaxy a new wormhole. Okay. Uh, I mean, pixel graphics look absolutely amazing, that's for sure. Even if I'm not, not too huge on pixel graphics myself. Um, I mean, it looks pretty good. What's gameplay like? Whoa. Oh my, oh, it's, there's so much going on. What'd that say? Deadlier difficulty. This game has a lot going on. This seems like it's the absolute opposite of ASMR. <laughs> Fast paced, super deadly. You can die anytime. It's almost like those like bullet hell games. Which uh, looks like 2D Doom. Actually it looks exactly like 2D Doom. Which I will say. I honestly, I wasn't a huge fan of. I know, I'm such a wimp, I guess. I mean, I, I liked it. I played the, the first one, Doom 2016, not Doom Eternal. I, I liked it. I liked the story. I just run around all the time. Sometimes I just like to take a look back and enjoy the scenery, you know? ASMR-like. 
this seems like it's the just heavy metal. Oh my goodness. It's literally heavy metal. <laughs> wow. Full metal mode to add more challenge. Sounds like a game where you just like die over and over again and start to level. I'm not I'm not you, John. New Contra. Side scrolling action games. I finished that game with 329 deaths, with 300 worked to the last boss. Okay. Aim itself was really hard, really hard, especially the final boss. Literally, if you think I never played Hollow Knights though, but gruesome. Run a gun. Uh, it's just not quite the game for me. I know a lot of people would absolutely love this type of game. And happy for them. Happy for people to find their niche and love what they love. But I, I just don't think it's a game that I would like and enjoy very much. Unfortunately. I, I just I wouldn't play it above the one that I got currently. So gonna be a thumbs down for me. Next is Werewolf, the Apocalypse, Heart of the Forest. And that is like one too many subtitles. It's like Werewolf, the Apocalypse, or Werewolf, Heart of the Forest, or the Apocalypse, Heart of the Forest would be good. But when you just add it all together, that's like, that's too much. Werewolf, the Apocalypse, Heart of the Forest. Are there multiple Werewolf, the apoc Apocalypses? I gotta, gotta find out. Werewolf, the Apocalypse, like if there was Werewolf, the Apocalypse, Heart of the Forest, and like Werewolf, the ap Apocalypse, Spleen of the City, or something, I don't know. <laughs> so, okay, so this seems, so the description is, explore the myths and monsters of Europe's last primeval wilderness. Please, my, uh, who arrives at the ancient Biloetia forest looking to explore her family history, discover rage, an adventure game inspired by the experience of the legendary tabletop role-playing game Werewolf of the Apocalypse. Uh, okay, so there's like a role-playing game, Werewolf of the Apocalypse, and they're they had to add something, I guess. They wanted to keep, you know, the, the name, the branding of the original, or the uh, the people would know it, and then add it their own. Okay, all right. I kind of see where they're going with the name now. 89% all refused, 81% current reviews. Werewolves visual novel, RPG, gothic horror. That doesn't sound too bad. I'm, I like some visual novels. No, oh, there's... A rage meter, willpower meter, health meter. Your willpower dropped to zero. Lose all of your health or willpower, you become impaired. Uh, okay. Interesting looking pictures all around. You have different character sheets, different conditions. This looks very interesting. I just, I hope it's not a game where, like, you can pick a random choice and it's like, oh, you died, start over from the beginning, and just be like, ugh, you know, it's just like, okay, fine, bring me back to the last checkpoint so I can choose something else. Like one of those choose your own adventure books from way back in the day. see what the uh, reviews have to say. Fairly short, that's fine. Second half is much more linear. You either love or hate the unique art style. Story branches significantly. Huh. RPG mechanics, great introduction. Amazing sound effects, ambiance, and occasional music. I like that. See that difficulty, but there 
is a risk of losing your health, though I never actually managed to do that. More importantly, the constant threat of being out of willpower in crucial moments. Resource that gets restocked whenever you reach one of your goals that may get used for difficult actions. Get that consider take considerations on when you can use it. style. That's for sure. Kind of creepy. Net, net positive. Yeah. Next is Lovecraft's Untold Stories. Lovecraft's Untold Stories is an action roguelite with RPG elements. Explore randomly generated levels based in Lovecraft's stories. from the mythos, improve your gear, solve puzzles, and find clues and knowledge to defeat the great old ones. 86% positive review, that's not bad. Now, I am a big fan of Lovecraft mythos and the whole cosmic horror. slash actual monsters and more so that is a definite plus not huge on the pixel graphics but that's that's not a, a very big deal is it action roguelite I'm not exactly sure what that means I don't typically like randomly generated levels because I would rather there just be a less levels that are meticulously handcrafted uh, instead of randomly generated. I want to see what some gameplay looks like. So sort of like walking around different areas. Wait, okay, can I, is there any action going on? Of Cthulhu. I mean, 
sounds really cool. Like, I like the mythos and stuff. Not sure if the gameplay is going to be something that I enjoy. Personally. Ancient Shogoth. Secrets of the Great Old Ones. Madness awaits. Ooh. You'll start losing your mind. Okay, I mean, it looks fine. Unbalanced mess with 99% of interactive items causing negative effects. Difficult to write. I'm a huge Lovecraft fan. I like it. I love roguelike games. I don't. I haven't played Isaac in the Gungeon. You know, I have. I'm currently Darkest Dungeon, and I am enjoying it, but I think I like the turn-based type games where it's slower, you get to think about what actions you want to take more than this one. Lack of save points, play for hours before you can save. Uh, I like I like the environment, I don't think I like the gameplay, so I'm going to have to give this one a uh, neutral or thumbs down. A, a light thumbs down. Even if I like the environment, I guess it, it probably just won't be one that I'd actually end up playing. Next is Iris and the Giant. Iris and the Giant is a fusion of CCG, RPG, and roguelike genres. You play as Iris, you must brave her fears in her imaginary world dive into a melancholic and gripping adventure filled with cute monsters and buried memories ready to face your inner demons. Okay. You know, I like some collectible card games like Slay the Spire is a lot of fun. Card Butler deck building. Okay. I, I can play with that. I can rogue light. I'm not so sure. That's 90% overall but 68% recent. That's a big discrepancy. So you build your ideal ski resort. That sounds fun. I'm sidetracked. No, no. See, that's what I do. I just I get sidetracked like that. Um, and I, I start adding games to my wish list. Just anyways, okay. Touching story of a young woman facing her inner demons and soothing the raging giant inside. Oh, the giant is her inner demon, huh? Tactical battles. Poetic, melancholic story. Okay. Eight hours playing the demo. One two-hour run. So it's different runs. Lack of explanation. As a big Slay the Spire fan, this game gets me in a similar trance where I can play for now. It's very difficult though. More so than Slay the, Slay the Spire. It feels bad at even while it's short. A depressing story. Okay. Cards are one time use. Interesting. Build a deck by frequently adding new cards. Constant struggle. It's a depressing story, okay. I mean, I can take on a depressing story, that's fine. I want to see a little bit of video of what the game is like. Upgrade your traits. You go over here, I guess. Let's see. I guess see a little bit so you have the cards. You can use some of them to battle, I, I suppose. Uh, yeah, no. I'm 
not exactly sure how it's deck building if cards are one time use. You don't really build your deck, you just recycle it. Um, the pressing story is fine. It's kind of short. I don't know. I think all in all, this is just kind of. kind of just kind of meh vibe to it. You know, maybe I would just play some of this. I would just play Slay the Spire again. And I did see Monster Train on Xbox Game Pass, so I might give that a go at some point. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah, overall, you know, neutral, man. Doesn't seem bad necessarily, but it doesn't seem like something I will actually play. In the very last game is Boomerang Foo. Slice and dice your friends with boomerangs in this frantic physics party game. Join a crew of your favorite foods as you grill, chill, and spill. Discover ridiculous power-ups and stack them together in deadly combinations. This game officially only supports local multiplayer. Well, that's not fun. Loki, local multiplayer only at a time like this, when people can't really get together. Oh, I guess there's bots, but I'm not going to play it for the bots. What's the gameplay like? see some gameplay. Okay, so you all start around. You are able to throw a boomerang. Oh, then you have to so you slice someone. Different power-ups. Like, oh, like an explosive boomerang. Oh, a donut one. Okay. And I guess, oh, you can hide. And what? Okay, okay. It's almost like, um, what's it called? Uh, engine or like uh, the duck game was that one the duck hunt no or everyone's ducks and you like shoot each other duck duck game yeah where it just kind of starts out it's like very short levels and everyone starts out you just have to kill each other basically until there's one one, one last person uh, surviving some of those games can be very fun 95 all time 100 percent recent I mean, this, this sounds, this sounds fun. Kick out of this for more than five minutes, wouldn't pay over 10 bucks for it. Seems like a lot of people have fun with this, with their friends and Nate. That sounds amazing. I hope they have a lot of fun. Um, I don't think I'm gonna get six friends in a room anytime soon. And if we are, probably won't be playing this game, you know. This, yeah, I, I, I don't think I'll end up playing this if I were to get it. So, yeah. So overall, I mean, I think it looks it looks really fun. I I'd play it. I just don't think I'd have five other people locally to play it. So, a little unfortunate. So I'll, I'll give this one, I want to give it a neutral, because it looks really fun, but I'm going to give it a thumbs down, just because I know I'm not going to play it. And alright, that is all of the games, let's go back to the start, and let's, uh, let's do a quick recap of what we thought. So, Outward was neutral, Valkyrie was thumbs up, and the space was thumbs up, moving out. I think was thumbs down. Trying for was neutral. Or was it thumbs up? Maybe it was neutral because I didn't, couldn't have co-op friends. Wild date was thumbs down. Train station renovation was thumbs up, I think. Fall forest was thumbs down. Art of the forest was thumbs up. Lovecraft Untold Stories was thumbs down. Iris was neutral. Boomerang food was thumbs down. If my math is correct, that is overall one thumbs down. <sighs> this is a... Some good games. I mean, Valkyrie Chronicles and Endless Space are 
on my wish list. I mean, so is outward and translation renovation. So four games that are on my wish list. List. Usually that would be a very good get. You know, but looking more into it, translation renovation it has some frame rate issues and very serious ones apparently. Outward, I'm not huge on the survival aspect. Valkyrie Chronicles 4 sounds really good, but I haven't played the rest of them in this space too. It takes a long time getting into 4Xs. So it just, there isn't like a very, very clear cut, you know, instant 100% purchase. Like none of these in here, even the ones I gave thumbs up to, were mostly like with some caveats. And there's a lot of like local multiplayer or co-op only games like Boomerang Foo, Wild 8, Trine 4, Moving Out. I mean, even outwards go up, probably better with a friend, like almost half of them are better in co-op, which I'm probably just not going to do, especially, you know, local multiplayer, which is, which is just, isn't perfect. Other games were, um, like survival, open world crafting, or roguelites, which I'm not the biggest fan of, but, uh, yeah, so... I think you can tell where I'm going with this one. This one's going to have to be a pass from me, dog. Just nothing super stand out for myself. I know a lot of people are going to really love this one, and I'm very happy for them. This just doesn't have games that quite pique my interest, which is kind of unfortunate because I might want to do a train station renovation video, but the frame rates are terrible even worse while I'm trying to, you know, record and stream do just everything else, all the small games, nothing piques my interest. Yeah. Yeah, unfortunate. And then I did want Valkyrie Chronicles 4 in, in this space, but it's going to have to wait another day. Uh, I don't think it's worth spending 12 bucks. Again, I have like 1,500 games on Steam something crazy like that. So a game has to be really stand out to catch my attention and for me to actually play it. So I, 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 I don't need to spend 12 bucks on games I'm not going to actually play, which seems to be what happens anyways uh, on a, whenever I, I purchase a, a new Steam bundle or a Humble bundle, but it is what it is because I don't think I've, I've played like any of uh, the past multiple months. Uh, yeah, skip that one. I don't know, the last one that I've actually played. I'm not sure. I, I want to play Call of Cthulhu. I'm, I'm getting there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get that one next. That's for sure. <laughs> All right, well... Let me know if you've played some of these games. Let me know. I have a whole month, basically, to claim this. So, um, anything can happen. Let me know if you've played any of these games, if you have experience, positive or negative. Let me know in the comments. Uh, maybe this is one of your favorite games, and you're just, like, yelling at me that it's... I'm, I'm not focusing on the, on the positive parts. But, uh... Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time, my friends.